Dantix here. Borderlands Game of the Year Enhanced Edition is out and I've had a chance to play it early thanks to 2K Games. I'm a veteran of the series and had already finished the original release back in 2009, but was excited to jump back into this creative and charming game. Borderlands is all about exploring the world, meeting rich and interesting characters, co-op gaming with up to three other friends, finding an absolute metric ton of loot, and using that loot to blow the heads off your enemies. The defining feature of Borderlands at the time was the fact that it had randomly created items that spawn out of chests and enemies. Think the Diablo series. The weapons can be different rarities, different levels, have different stats, different elemental properties, and different unique properties. This was new for the first-person shooter genre. This new loot system and the fact you can show off to your friends made the drive to get interesting and new weapons at Snoop Dogg levels of high. In its success, a new genre was born, the Looter Shooter. So in this spoiler-free video, I'll talk Game of the Year Enhanced Edition impressions, the new features, how it stacks up to other games in the series, and if it's worth a look. Before we start, I'm giving away a console of your choice. All you have to do to enter is follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. If you want to chat to like-minded individuals and talk games and Borderlands 3, be sure to join my Discord, 17,000 members and counting. Let me start with this. If you're looking for a new Borderlands experience, you won't find it here. However, if you haven't played the game before or looking for a nostalgia trip, it may be time to check out the grandfather of the modern looter shooter. The grandfather that might have to pull up his pants every now and then, but still drops $300 for you on Christmas, and you know his pension isn't covering it. Until this day, Borderlands is the only series to really do the genre justice. Now, it's justice in beautiful 4K. Everyone who already owns Borderlands will get the Game of the Year edition for free, so now is the best time to revisit the series if you already own Borderlands 1 before Borderlands 3 hits. It's released on PC for $19.99 and Xbox One and PS4 for $29.99. It features all the same basic content as the original game, as well as all the game's DLCs. Claptap's new robot revolution, the zombie island of Dr. Ned, Mad Moxie's Underdome Riot, and the secret army of General Knox, all four being an absolute bonanza of sweet, sweet loot. The most notable enhancement though is the fact that you can now play in 4K resolution. The footage you are seeing was recorded in 2K because frankly I didn't have the storage space to have so much 4K footage around, nor had a good enough monitor to make use of it, but damn if you put the original game and the game of the year edition side by side there's a very, very clear difference. Remember when TVs upgraded from standard to high def and the news anchors weren't quite ready for it yet? You could see the orange makeup sweat oozing out of the pores of Carol forehead. Well, Borderlands Enhanced Edition is that ooze. If you said the game was just released this year and I had never played it before or never seen it before, I'd believe you. It will come as no surprise then when I say that Gearbox have also made improvements to the character models, lighting and textures. This would have taken the most amount of time for them to pull off. Not that it's needed, the cell shaded art style that Borderlands is known for is timeless. Where regular 3D models would age terribly, Borderlands still looks gorgeous. You notice the roughness around the edges sometimes, but overall it's aged well. Like me. I have greys and a Dyson V10 vacuum. Single line ladies. So, what about the loot? You can now sort your inventory easier and it will automatically pick up ammo, cash and health instead of needing to collect them. Most importantly, new guns are being added. Six legendary quality custom skinned weapons, which is the highest and most sought after because of their unique properties, are available from bosses or by using shift keys. I desperately want to show you what you can get, but I won't add a respect. This video will remain spoiler free, just know that they are fantastic. Speaking of shift keys, you will apparently be granted 75 of them for owning Borderlands 2 or the pre-sequel. For those who don't know, these keys will open a large high rarity loot chest. And the shift codes, which grant you a key in game, are usually doled out by developers as loyalty rewards on their social media accounts. 75 is absolutely bonkers. However, as the version I played was early access, I didn't have the ability to claim these keys just yet, being shifty with the shift keys. A new feature to note is the addition of the minimap. Honestly, I can't remember it not being there since I played all the way back in 2009. However, trying playing without it, it wasn't easy. The minimap means you won't have to jump in and out of your map by holding tab every couple of minutes, since seeing where your objectives are and where you're going feels so important. It feels like numbers have also been tuned as well. I distinctly remember enemies being more difficult to kill and not hitting as hard, though maybe that's just because I've grown wiser over these 10 years. No, <laughs> no, that, that, that can't be it. At any rate, it feels like it's in a good spot. What has been tuned though is the final boss. Let me say that I didn't remember it to be that hard. 
it was entirely forgettable before and now I don't think I'll forget. They state it's more challenging, engaging and rewarding and yes, it has improved in those areas. Finally, just like you can do in Borderlands 2, you can customize your character's head. This starts with different face models and hats and I'm sure more will be added in time like there was for Borderlands 2. As far as I can tell, nothing has changed within the multiplayer experience itself. You can create your own private session, leave the game open for your friends or search for other players. At the time of review, I opted to play alone because, you know, I have no friends. Ladies, please, no pushing. So, Borderlands Game of the Year Enhanced Edition is not a simple port with all the DLCs included. It comes with new features and drastically upgrades the quality of visuals. But what if you haven't touched a Borderlands game before? What is it all about and should you check it out? Well, you start on a planet called Pandora, fabled to contain a secret vault that houses unimaginable loot. So you start by choosing one of four vault hunters, each with their own special skill and passive ability tree to invest in. So you could pick any of the four and be relatively happy with your choice, as they all add something interesting to the table without outshining the loot. If your friends are joining you, you can have a party of up to four starting the journey together, or they can join at any time. After you choose your character, you're thrown into the action fairly fast, but not before meeting the most adorable robot pal, Claptrap. He gets grief online by a few individuals whose joy has long since left their bodies and nothing but husks are left, but I adore him. He provides numerous smiles and laughs throughout the game, and check out the dancing. Depending on the character you choose, you'll start with a different basic weapon, but it won't be long until you find another. In both playthroughs of the game, I didn't see a single weapon that was the same, except for a few commons which don't roll modifiers on their stats. Weapons have a punchy feel and elemental effects are icing on the cake. You might just find yourself chuckling maniacally as the screen explodes with electricity and your enemies vaporize before your eyes. Each weapon has its own distinct feel, but I did notice a few didn't have the punch they deserved. For example, the sniper rifle you start with as Mordecai doesn't blow back from recoil enough, making the shots feel like a BB gun, and the weight also doesn't feel quite right. Also, it misses far too often, but this is a symptom of the weapons following an RPG stat-based formula. Each weapon has accuracy, damage, recoil, etc., so expect to be stormtroopering most shots with early level weapons. You will be using these weapons though to take out bandits and various beasts on the planet of Pandora. My favourite and probably the most numerous of these beasts being the Skag. Each enemy has a weak point which when shot will land a critical hit for bonus damage and nothing feels quite as satisfying as a Skag or a bandit's head exploding in a shower of bl oh, I have issues. Ladies, the line is getting a bit too long now and don't make me call the enforcers. In the case of the Skag, when it opens its mouth, shoot it to get a critical strike. Humans, of course, it's the head. It's our weakness. Well, mine at least. <laughs> Speaking of enemy variety, I enjoyed quite a few of them and their quirkiness. Like the midget psycho bandit who charges at you with a shotgun, fires and then flies backwards from the recoil while giving off mad sounding giggles. There's a decent amount of enemy variety on Pandora but don't expect any groundbreaking AI. They will mostly try to kill you by rolling their face on yours or firing lead at you. Some will run away or duck behind cover and some have interesting effects but they're all fairly predictable. But smart AI isn't what Borderlands is about. It's about blowing their heads off with that new weapon you just got 30 seconds ago. Oh wait, you just got another one when you blew that guy's head off. Time to find another fine fellow who enjoys acid balls to the eyelids. The environments though, start off fairly dull. You'll be seeing similar wasteland aesthetics over and over and since you need to spend quite a bit of time trekking around, it's a shame. This is less forgiving now than it was 10 years ago, however, it does start to improve as you progress and enemies become increasingly more interesting and of course, when you unlock the ability to drive around with the Outrider, it becomes a lot easier. What is charming, though, is the little things you find later around in the world, riding from long dead residents on the walls or banded artifacts that make you giggle. I didn't even notice at first, but there's a day and night cycle and it's seamless. It adds to the atmosphere. Also, the DLC adds quite a bit of flavor to the mix as well in terms of environments. At the end of the day, you play Borderlands if you want to relax, not if you want a fast paced action RPG. So the time spent exploring shouldn't be a problem in the Dust Bowl like aesthetic. In terms of missions, they'll be doled out by NPCs, bounty boards, and random objects you find in the world. Complete these for rewards like weapons, shields, grenade mods, experience, and cash. When you hit level 5, you'll unlock your character's first ability, well, their only ability. Throwing out a defensive turret, for example, is the soldiers. Subsequent levels after will grant one point to spend on a passive skill. 
There's three trees for each character and they have their own different theme. In the case of Mordecai the Hunter, he has a tree for precision and sniper rifles, a tree to buff his skill which sends out his pet Bloodwing, and a tree to buff pistols. You start by being able to equip two weapons, one grenade mod and one shield item. Later on you'll unlock more weapon slots. You equip a shield item to increase your shields, but health is raised naturally as you level. If you want to have health and shields, you'll be put in a crippled state where you can't use any action skills, grenades or move. In this state, you start slowly bleeding out and when that reaches the end, you die. You can then respawn for a cost. However, if you kill an enemy while crippled, you'll get a second wind and you can re-enter gameplay with low health and a full shield. One of your teammates can also resurrect you from this downed state. When you get back on your feet, you can continue with the storyline. Mega corporations are trying to seize control of Pandora and the alien vault with its rumored game-changing alien tech contained within has them frothing at the mouth more than a US congressman at a playground. Okay, okay this, is, this is a review, Dan, I gotta cut this out. So, you're rushing to find the vault first while dodging private armies and baddies along the way. The story is engaging, but after playing Borderlands 2, I'm kind of left wanting. I found the Borderlands 2 experience to be much more rich and its antagonist Handsome Jack who constantly taunts you throughout the experience is charming, but he also breaks up the monotony. In 2, you want to see him dead from the very start, giving you drive to get through the game. Sadly, this is lacking in Borderlands 1 as it takes quite a bit to get invested in the storyline, but those willing to stick it out will be in for a treat. Just like those kids when the US Cong- uh, 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 yeah, no. So, my final thoughts on the Borderlands Game of the Year Enhanced Edition. Well, for $19.99 or $29.99, you can get a genre-defining, critically acclaimed title that has been enhanced to run even better than before. The graphics are timeless, the storyline is good besides the slow start, the environment is lacking but made up for by enemy types, the variety in the loot and the gameplay, which is the most important part of any title. If you have a few friends and you haven't played this series yet, I highly recommend picking up this game as looting and shooting together is fun and feels like the old land days of yester decade, but it does beg the question, would it simply be better picking up Borderlands 2 or the pre-sequel over the Borderlands 1 Game of the Year Enhanced Edition? Honestly, if you can only buy one, I would still recommend buying Borderlands 2. In many ways, it's a superior game with a more memorable story, a better mission design, more loot, and more content. Right now on Steam, you can pick up the Handsome Collection for around $20. That includes Borderlands 2, the DLC, and the pre-sequel. That's the same price as the Game of the Year Enhanced Edition, but it won't stay that price forever, so check it out. If you're looking to play through them sequentially for the storyline, well, this is a nice little upgrade that definitely won't have you complaining. So my final verdict, consider it. Thanks for watching guys, I had fun making this video and I hope you enjoyed it. For those who did, be sure to leave a like, comment and subscribe, it helps the channel out with that pesky YouTube algorithm. Be sure not to miss out on the competition, which I'll be providing more details for soon. Be sure to talk to me and other like-minded individuals on Discord, and thanks again to my Patreon supporters. I'll be back with more Borderlands very soon.